So you think you know Enterprise 2.0. Hi, I'm Carl. And I'm Dan. I'm a boomer. He sure is. And I'm a millennial. You think you are. <laughs> I love the internet. I love the internets. Yeah, Dan, how cute. I don't heart the internet. I love the internet. I get it. It's how I run my business effectively today. Well, me and my 1,423 friends or so, there's probably some more today, uh, we kind of own and we run the internet, FTW. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I gotta get out of character. I've had it. Seriously, doesn't, how many of you get aggravated by this? Me and my thousands of friends. You don't have a thousand friends, get real. God, and then the acronyms. I know I'm gonna hate myself for asking, but what's FTW? It's actually for the win. For the win. You need to be a gamer to get it. Yeah, I got one for you from my generation. WTF, Dan. <laughs> Nice business suit, by the way. It's warm out today. All right, uh, enough of this. Let's get back on track. Why am I here today? I'm here to tell you that as part of the boomer generation, I am pumped up about Enterprise 2.0. I get it. I see it. I think it has huge potential for the way I run my organization. Well, that's strange, because... I actually think there's a lot of potential with Enterprise 2.0, too, for my organization. Huh. There's something kind of weird. Hmm. Actually, folks, that's why we're here. A little bit more background about Dan and I. My name is Carl Frapalo. I'm with AIM International. I'm the Vice President of Market Intelligence. This is Dan Kelson. He works with me there. He's Director of Market Intelligence. And as Steve highlighted a few moments earlier, we completed in the first quarter of this year a very extensive study on what really is going on with Enterprise 2.0. We've attended the show year after year. This is our third year here. We've attended some of the presentations so far this year, and you know we're on board, we're with it, like you. It's cool, it's great, it's moving forward, but what is the reality? And we found, we wanted to know. So we set out and we ran a survey that we got 441 people to respond to of all ages, all vertical industries from around the world. We compiled what we learned into a 90-page report. And it's the findings that we came up with that we want to share with you today. It was a roller coaster ride. We found out that some of the things we all believed to be true were indeed true. We dispelled a whole bunch of myths. We had some very intellectual debates going on, knowing that this was a very big task to undertake. We didn't just try to do it ourselves. We assembled a panel of some fellow thought leaders to help us around some of the rougher findings we were find, uh, coming up with. These are names you probably recognize, Patty Aklam, Stowe Boyd, Andrew McAfee, Eric Swee, and David Weinberger. Interestingly enough, one of the very first things we had a debate on between ourselves and our advisors was, what is the real definition of Enterprise 2.0? In the report, we have printed out the online debate we got into among all of us. And in the end, we all kind of agreed to disagree. But with that said, what we want to do today is clearly not share everything that we came up with in a 90-page report, but to highlight some of the top findings. So what are we going to focus on? Well, the first one was what we somewhat dramatized in our opening. More and more, my impression anyway, is that we hear that age really does matter. That it is the younger generation that understands Enterprise 2.0. They're the ones that are going to drive us into the acceptance of Enterprise 2.0. Some zealots will say, if you don't have young people in your company, you'll never get it. Our survey found it's not true. That there were very little differences of opinion based on age in an enterprise setting. This is not Web 2.0, this is Enterprise 2.0. We also uncovered that culture matters. No, really. 
you know, we're, we're so used to hearing that it's kind of white noise. Culture's important, look at your corporate culture, culture really matters. Our findings found that it is probably the single most important thing you have got to get in order if you want to embrace Enterprise 2.0. Worry not about the average age of your individuals, worry about their attitudes and their opinions and the way they get their work done. We'll talk a little bit about those findings. We're going to show how the market is not moving as fast as we are led to believe and how that is frustrating some of the early adopters and the fact that Enterprise 2.0 is still predominantly being undertaken in even some of the healthier organizations, if you will, in a non-strategic way. That ease of use capability allows it to pop up in many ad hoc ways rather than strategically being deployed with a measured ROI. So let's jump into some of those findings. Dan, why don't you do this one? All right, so as we were joking around a little bit here, it's good to get out of the office and put on my fresh new suit. Uh, age matters slightly, but you know, I was kind of surprised. I am younger than Carl, as it turns out. And so we had some internal debate about how important is age. And you know, I was, I'm curious, I'm a researcher, so I wanted to find out what other people thought. It was kind of interesting that we asked the question, how critical is Enterprise 2.0? Just not beyond, isn't it fun to have rounded corners and Ajax and uh, pastel colors on your interfaces and things? But you know, seriously, how can we actually get things done in Enterprise 2.0? Is it real? Is it strategically interesting? Is it critical? And for the significant to imperative responses, it was almost a dead tie for the millennials, which is 20 to 35 for our purposes. There's actually controversy on where the millennial cutoff is. We chose 20 to 35 as a, as a round ballpark. Gen X, 36 to 49, and 50 plus is boomer. So interesting that it didn't matter as much as we thought, almost a dead tie. And indeed, what we found was where differences did occur in age and opinion, and a few did pop up. They weren't always in the direction one would expect, clearly that we expected. When we asked, are you yourself an internal champion of Enterprise 2.0 in your organization, we saw a slight rift based on age. It wasn't profound. What made it profound was it was in the favor of the older generation. Boomers, 56% said, yeah, I'm the champion in my organization. Millennials, 45%. So that's all the time we're going to spend on the age. There's a lot more in the report along these lines. What I want to bring front and center right now is just how powerful culture really mattered. Now we can't go into detail because of the amount of time we have today as to how we broke our survey group up. It's based on a methodology that I had put together many years ago when I was a knowledge management consultant. And we profiled the people who responded based on this methodology we kind of said okay they're a km inclined company they're not with a km inclined company you can figure out you can read about more of the process in the report but the point was we made this approach we separated them into two communities and we found those that work in a culture that is ripe for things like knowledge management and collaboration and innovation management these companies and the people that work in them came out two times as likely to significantly achieve an increase in the rate of their networking and the increase in the number of communities they were forming after they brought Enterprise 2.0 technologies in. Culture was driving much more than anything like age. And indeed, in looking at the culture and separating it in culture, we saw more than just cultural differences. You want to explain this one? Yeah, so just out of curiosity, how many people here think that their organization is an uh, early adopter? Can you raise a hand? So you would hope, this is the third year of this event, that there would be a lot of people here that actually believe in this and want to get things done in Enterprise 2.0, so that's great to see. Uh, the point of this slide here is Carl explained that we had, um, we worked together previously at our last job and uh, did a lot of knowledge management work. We have this secret sauce that maybe we can share with you on uh, how to identify a ripe culture for Enterprise 2.0. The point was that, again, we didn't know that going into this. We wanted to find out if there was something different about how people could find success. In the KM Inclined group, which is on the right, uh, this is uh, sort of uh, chasm style analysis, if you're familiar with uh, Jeffrey Moore and Crossing the Chasm. It's uh, what, a 20, 30 year old book maybe? So not- it's Younger than me. Not, not quite as old as Carl. Um, uh, interesting way to look at how markets adopt things. So we don't just hear of Enterprise 2.0 and suddenly everybody's doing it. It takes a while for things to waft through the market and some adopt faster and some, uh, some a little slower. So as you can see from the KM inclined, the adoption is greatly magnified 
if it's a ripe culture, the came inclination shows that the culture is ready for sharing and transparency and things like that. So much uh, higher levels of participation in RSS, wikis, and blogs specifically. I was a little shocked myself. I've done 50 podcasts or so, and podcasts uh, are the third bullet point there on the, uh, on the far right. So we're getting there. It's going to take a little bit longer. And why is that? Well, culture creeps slightly cautiously. Uh, you know, me, I'm an early adopter. I know a lot of people that are early adopters, but an organization tends to be a little bit lumpy, so not quite as, as fast as an individual. It takes a little bit longer if you have 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 300,000 people in your, in your organization. So it takes a while to get them moving. That leads us, uh, partly, uh, the reason for the sort of lumpiness is that we did find that strategy is slightly hard to find for people that are looking at Enterprise 2.0. That's not necessarily bad because, again, it takes a while for things to move through a market and for people to get things under the belt and experiment and get, uh, get moving. The KM inclined again, though, uh, they were 31% as likely, a relatively large percentage, versus the general population of our survey to actually pursue Enterprise 2.0 strategically, which doesn't mean that they're doing it enterprise-wide, because that's pretty rare. But it, is, it, it does mean that they actually have a purpose for doing this, other than, I hear a wiki's cool, so let's do that. Uh, that's not a really great approach. If that helps you to get your feet wet, that's fantastic. But that's just the beginning. So in starting to wrap this rather brief presentation up, we've spent quite a bit of time in the presentation, relatively speaking, on the differences that we found. The good news was that we found a whole lot of commonality as well across the vertical industries, across the age groups, across countries, across cultures a lot of synergy and understanding on why am I even looking at Enterprise 2.0. Here we didn't bother to split things up. We looked at does it warrant splitting this up by industry, by age. No, there was pretty much commonality across all the different groups. And there's this real sense that you know, the real benefit is going to come from things like increasing collaboration, making us smarter and understanding we know what we know something that dates way back to the knowledge management days, making us faster, thinking faster, more responsive, easier to communicate, quicker communication within the enterprise. So there's a lot of camaraderie around that. And this led to a lot of other things we don't have slides on, but there was camaraderie around things like, uh, what are the biggest obstacles? That wasn't something that seemed to differ from company to company. The biggest obstacles came out, clearly the number one was just lack of understanding. Even in those companies that were inclined, those that were going beyond experimentation, they reported the biggest obstacle is education, getting people to better understand what this is really all about, beyond a single wiki, beyond two blogs. How do we strategically put this together? Right on its heels, the second biggest obstacle everybody pointed to was a lack of best practices a lack of serious business cases around this. And that's not to say that there are none, but the lack, the ability to just pull these things out, my back pocket, and get things moving that way. I mentioned earlier one of the uh, anomalies or problems that we uncovered was, and it very much reflects the number one obstacle, the lack of understanding. We have yet to really come up with a very clear definition. And that's a part of this report I do encourage you to read, both the debate that we went through and the uh, mix of answers we got back from those that responded to the survey. People's heads are going off in many different directions in what exactly is Enterprise 2.0. So if that's the case, why hasn't it failed? Because of this slide. No matter what we exactly define it as, and that's an issue we probably should be grappling with, the good news is these slides over here are telling us we understand the end result. We got our eyes on the prize. We understand the FTW and all of this. FTW, how was that, Dan? Yeah, that was pretty, pretty good, good, huh? <laughs> so, I encourage you to please read the report. AIM is a nonprofit organization, and because of that, this report costs you a big whopping nothing. We are big proponents in spreading the word. Download the report. Tell us what you think. We have each, in our own way, leveraged Enterprise 2.0 to engage you in an online community. After you've downloaded the report, challenge the findings, discuss the findings. Let us know what your opinion of all of this is. I, as a boomer, have very carefully established very serious online communities. 
You can find my blog at takingaim.com. Of course, you can reach me through email, and that's my email address. And for those of you who would like to know more about knowledge management and what it has to do with Enterprise 2.0, I'll be talking about that tomorrow here at this show at 8 o'clock. And, you know, who doesn't have a blog? So, of course, I have a blog. It's biztechtalk.com. Hopefully you've read it or listened to my, some of my podcasts. If you insist, I suppose I will take an email address uh, from you. You can use it there. I'd rather that you use Twitter if it's actually up today or tomorrow or the next day, but it's pretty handy when it's around. Uh, Facebook, I'm not a huge fan of that myself. LinkedIn, Plurk, FriendFeed, any of these crazy services. I'm on just about everything I can find. Uh, can't guarantee that I will be instantly responsive, but I will try. And I'd love to meet you on the web, and we can call it Web 2.0, Enterprise 2.0. Uh, the lines are blurring, but uh, love to see you there and see what we can do. Is there anything else you want to share with them? Well, yeah, actually I have a confession. I'm really a Gen Xer. I'm not a millennial. He just plays one on TV. <laughs> or Thank a little you. later. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thanks, guys. That's great. Thanks.